Hello you beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. So, where the bloody hell have you been? I hear you all asking with clenched raised fists. Well, I will uh, explain all as the video goes on, but let's get down to uh, what's in front of us. So firstly, a warm welcome to you all again. Sorry it's been a few weeks since the last video. So in front of you, I have basically painted the pylons on the uh on the kit i don't know the gray my bad uh, that's the only bit i forgot to note but uh yeah i painted those all separately and then you get this fabulous decal sheet which is just literally crammed full of decals for the various armaments missiles rockets and bits and pieces that come with the kit now because this is the ukraine air force one that we're doing together um, this one doesn't actually uh, go on the show circuit with any weapons on it so i have not done the actual missiles themselves just the actual pylons so as always the uh, fundamentals for doing uh, any decaling for me personally is the microset and microsoul combo i know there are others out there and i will probably delve into those on the next kit or the one after just to get some experience but as you can see there are lots and lots of uh, decals for the pylons it makes them look really very realistic which is nice it's a bit time consuming but uh very rewarding at the end so as usual with uh myself i put the micro sole on first with the paintbrush allow the decals to soak for sort of 30 seconds on the paper and then as you can see they they come up pretty easily and it's just the case as i've uh, sort of outlined or explained in previous videos just a case of uh, laying the decal down allowing the, the setting solutions to do their thing over a bit of time and uh, obviously using a cotton bud to uh, flatten them down and then i think it's the micro set i i do forget which way round it goes i always forget i have to check the bottles every time i do this you think after all these years i'd know by now but then it's just a case of laying that down on top to give it on that painted on look so where have i been i hear you all crying well guys i have to be honest i sort of hit a bit of a block with uh with the kit i sort of got down to the last half hour i've literally just got part, um some pitos and 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 sort of aerials and bits and pieces to put on it and i just can't get myself over the line with it i have just been that busy with life work bit family commitments bits and pieces it has because it's the summer it has just got in the way big time so i do apologize it's taken this long um, and i appreciate the uh the messages i've had from uh, you guys asking where i am and if i'm okay i'm okay everything's fine i really appreciate your concern and reaching out to me but uh, everything's fine it's just a really busy summer for me uh, and obviously this is a hobby sadly uh, at this stage in life so therefore it has to take a bit of a backstage anyway enough of my ramblings um so on next was getting up the uh, missile or gun sights uh, on the, the centre bit in the cockpit here, the centre console, the sort of shroud I think it is. So it's a case of starting off with flat black XF1 and as you'll see later on moving to rubber black just to give it the, a bit more of a realistic look. And as you can see there I masked the, uh, the glass part of the site and just left the framework. And so here on inwards it was just a case as we speed up the uh, video here of just, just painting it really. Nothing more extravagant and, and glamorous than that. But it was, this is just one of those many little jobs that were just needing to be finished off on the kit to, to get it all together. So I, I started with a flat black, but it didn't come out too flat for me. Um, I don't know why that was, whether the, the conditions were just not right or I did something slightly wrong. Either way, I'm not fussed. So as the video goes on here or the, the episode goes on here, you'll see that I quickly changed to the rubber black just to take that glossy effect away and also just give it that, that more slightly re realistic sort of flat black look. So I thank you as always for joining me again for this episode. Um, I might as well broach the subject while I'm here. I'm not sure when the next one's going to be out. Uh, um, as I say, it is summer, guys, so please do bear with me. I appreciate it's a little bit frustrating because we wanted to get this finished together in, in good time. Um, I'm doing my best. As soon as, as soon as I get any sort of free time, I will get this um, Sukhoi over the uh, over the line and when we can get on with the Zukimura F4 um, Phantom. But... Uh, I, I, that Zukimura, as much as I'm waxing lyrical about it, it is going to look like it's going it's to sort of take a bit of a backstage for a while, just while the summer's on. So it, it might be a bit sort of sporadic with the videos for that. But do please bear with me. Don't don't sort of run away. They they will come. The, the videos will will come thick and fast. I'm sure again in winter. 
do excuse the state of my hands i didn't wear gloves i don't know why i, I just don't i don't particularly like them that much so i've got a bit of a, a, a tatty black hand so here's a, a close-up of me just removing the uh the tiny bit of masking that i used just to keep the glass bit clear for the for the the back seat driver uh, i think that's actually the pilot that sits in the rear um he's his gun sight or missile sight depending on how you want to call it so i just use a little bit of masking tape and as you see a bit fiddly to get off because it's so small but uh, we end up with a nice framework nonetheless which i was pleased with like you can see there thanks as always for joining me really appreciate it if you haven't already it would be uh, a fabulous thing if you could click the like and subscribe buttons uh, it just keeps the good old YouTube algorithm going and I would appreciate that greatly if you would join us along for the next builds um, and just just join along and say hello and enjoy the videos hopefully. So there we go, nice close up of the cockpit, looking rather good. It's been a while since we've seen that because we've had the canopy over the top masked. And as always it's just using a, an old airbrush needle with some glue, I think it was super glue, and it's just a case of carefully popping it in the holes there and then placing this centre bit in, in situ, the shroud for the rear instrument uh, panel. As you can see, it's a little bit fiddly because it has to sort of slot in behind the seat in front. And as I was doing this live, it, uh, I didn't want to do two takes of it. I thought I'll just keep you with me while I do it. But there you go, in situation and all looking complete. And that cockpit looking pretty damn marvellous, if I may say so myself. Let me know what you think about it. Would you be happy with it? I hope so, because I'm very happy with it. So just a quick look there into the cockpit of all the extra details, the extra, the excellent uh, quinter decals there, bringing it very much to life. So next up, it's just a test fit of the uh, of the main uh, cockpit glass or the uh, I don't know what that's called. I guess it's just the cockpit. Um, yeah, cockpit glass. We'll go with it. But uh, yeah, there we are. I've managed to remove all the masking tape there, as you can see from the inside and the outside. Now, this was really crystal clear, but I had a minor incident. Well, I say minor, I mean, I made it look minor. But um, yeah, I, I when I was doing some work with getting the, the review mirrors in there, which I haven't videoed, by the way, because it was just too fiddly to do. But when I was getting the mirrors in there, a tiny piece of super glue decided it would ping off, um, off my applicator. I'm not even joking you, sail into the air and then come back down onto the glass. Uh, onto the plastic clear part so i had to uh basically uh, after some considerable swearing um and questioning the meaning of life i left it and then i've had to basically sand it all back and polish that but using various grades and then using uh, some mcguire's compound polish to get the glass to look even vaguely reasonable at one point it was I, i'm not even joking you it was looking like i was going to have a frosted cockpit um, which as you can imagine I was pretty sort of despairing over but I, I managed to sort of persevere keep my cool and just take my time and manage to sort of polish it back to what I would say is probably 90% perfect but considering how it was I will take it all day long and I, I stopped fiddling so here we are just applying a bit of super glue to the bottom of the pylons and it's just a case of methodically running through um, and, and applying the pylons like you see in front of you Nothing more fancy than just doing that, and that's that. And it does slot in so nicely. It's quite a satisfying bit, that rear one there. As you can see though, you've kind of got those sort of half circle blue bits. I do deal with them off camera. Um, it was just a case of getting the same gray and delicately using a very fine paintbrush to just go in line and, and fill in those little blue bits to make it look like it was one solid pylon. I don't know why manufacturers are, get a bit obsessed with doing that. I don't understand why they can't just be a hole in the center of these pylons with a little sticky out bit on the actual pylon itself that you can then put in situ and then it looks like it's it's all in sort of one nice line instead of having to fill in those little bits but there you go i don't make these kits so i don't know anyway what i'm describing here very briefly is each pylon has an a b c or d as you can see there this is part b so then you have to tie it up with the instructions around the side and it tells you where a pylon a or pylon b would have been situated on the wing so as you can see there pylon a would have been the second one in or first one in actually because it's not the wing pylon it's pretty well, it's very easy to work out and it also tells you on the top left there the missile uh, the missiles it carries in the pylon number 
numbers and they're all marked out on the sprue which is really handy so it makes it a bit foolproof which is nice so with the joys of technology um, I will show you just how I do another one on the wings and then uh, you'll get a view of how the whole uh, how the whole aircraft looks once they're all on. Speed this up for you so you don't have to go through that too long. It's just a case of placing them on situ you there. I use super glue just to just to get them or CA glue if you want to be fancy about it. Um, just use that just to get them in situ pretty quickly. And as you can see there, those annoying little blue bits sticking down all had to be uh, be painted in. But not to worry, it gave me something to do and it, it all came good in the end. There we go. One tell energy, ta-da, all the pylons are on. And now she, she's just starting to turn the corner now, starting to look like a mean machine that she is now. She's got the pylons, everything's all good there. You know, this is quite a good turning point with the kit. And the decals, I think, really set it off well, give it a very nice, well, it, as, you, as it's meant to, give it a nice realistic look and representation of the real thing. So the long and short of it was, um, obviously those pylons don't have those sort of circular bits on the, in, in real life. So I filled them in with some perfect plastic putty, uh, which is great stuff for just filling in basic seam lines and, 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 and sort of uh, lines in the plastic, etc. And then I, all I do is let it dry a little bit, get a cotton bud. And it's just a case of running the, cute, well, the, the cotton bud over it and it just clears it clears all the excess off with a bit of water like so it gets it neat and tidy and believe it or not in there it has filled those those sort of uh, attachment points or seam lines perfectly and then it was just a case of delicately with a fine brush just uh, painting over the, the, those blue bits in the grey and uh, it all went together really nicely actually I was very pleased with it you do get a tiny bit of shrinkage with this putty but it's, it's nothing too much to worry about, especially in this scale, it, it looks fine. As you can see, it looks a bit messy there, a little bit white all over the place. I do tidy that up and give it a bit of a wash down, but it's just to give you an idea of just how flexible this stuff is, it's very, very good. So next up, I think it's the bit with pretty, hopefully you've all been waiting for, and it's the bit I got a bit nervous over, it is the weathering. So I, I took a, a, a good long look at many, many photos of this particular aircraft and how it was, to be honest with you, they weren't really, they aren't really that weathered. They have this sort of patch here. I don't know what it is, maybe you guys do, but they have this, it has this patch here and on the same side, it's quite weathered, a bit sooty, a bit rusty. So I used the uh, Tamiya weathering uh, master uh, powders, which uh, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship I have with these. Sometimes it works really well, sometimes it doesn't. On this occasion, it worked really well, and uh, I used this as well. This has got a rubber tip to it. I'm not sure what that's called, but I use that just to sort of get the um, get the grime in place. So I fast-forwarded this just to give you, so it's not too boring for you, but it gives you a rough idea of what I did. And it's just a case of dabbing this in and, and slowly building up, taking a step back, having a look to see if it's in scale, because sometimes I think weathering is overdone and then it, it, it's not in scale. I, I hope that makes sense to you. I wanted to keep it in scale, so I sort of take a step back, have a look, see if it looks realistic to the size of the aircraft, how far away I am, and then sort of carried on. Now, I hope you agree. I, I think I've, I've got it pretty bang on here. Um, I was happy with it and almost relieved actually after doing all this work that the weathering has come through. Here I am just doing the streaking from the fuel filler point. It gets a bit of, bit of streaking on there. And it doesn't have to look perfect to start with because you can blend it and work with it and smear it and move it around and it, and it all comes good in the end. Seems to be like I'm saying that a lot, it all comes good, but it does. It, it, all, it, all, come, it all sort of came out well and I was happy with it. And like I say, it's just a case of working over the bits that would have got a bit of grease, a bit of grime, a bit of this, a bit of that on it. And as you can see near the engines there, uh, there's a little bit of uh, grime there as well where the outlet vents are. And it, yeah, it was just a case of not overdoing it. I was really cautious. I'd rather underdo weathering all day long than overdo it. I mean, I know there's no sort of right and wrong answer with it, but it's, it, it's what everyone perceives to be correct. But uh, So this is my perception of what's correct. I mean, uh, you guys might disagree, you might agree, <laughs> but um, hopefully you agree. Um, and then we go on to oil colours. 
which were mixed up with white spirit in that little pot. So it's just a case of getting this oil wash, it's very light, and as you can see, just dabbing it around sort of um, access panels and hatches and things like that. Letting it just do its thing, basically. Now, what I have learned after this is, well, to be fair, I knew it beforehand, is if you want to sort of use sort of like these washes, they're good on a, a gloss surface like we have in front of us. It can be, you know, it's easy to get it in the panel lines and then wipe it away. But if you want to do a bit of sort of modulation and sort of, um, bit of stippling and things like that and just changing colors it's it can work really well on a matte uh, surface like if you uh, get a matte clear finish over the top um, it, it works really well with uh, oil washes as well forgive me if I sound a little bit out of breath the old uh, camera has just decided it would run out of battery so I've had to do a mad dash to uh, go and get the uh, the plug and, uh, and and charge it in so uh, yeah do forgive me for my breath sound uh, my voice sounds a little bit out of breath just wanted to get get on with it. I've already been disturbed once by the dog running in, so uh, hopefully this has all been coherent and made sense to you all. Ah, oh, the joys of family life, eh? So anyway, I'm digressing. So there we go, it's just in case you don't have to be too careful with it, just getting the oil washing. Now I've chosen a brown here, because not all dirt is black. So a bit of brown for a bit of variation. Just allow that to stay there. You don't have to rush with it. I mean, I left it there for 20 minutes and then it's just a case of getting a cotton bud and you can just take away, dab away what you want and what you don't want. And this is where the artistic license comes in, what you're happy with. Um, you basically just go with it like so. And then I've also just allowed the, the, like the cotton bud to just pulling it away in the direction of um, of air of wind or, or air travel, wind travel over it, if you know what I mean. So if there is any streaking, the wind would pull it, obviously, towards the back of the aircraft. So that's what I've kind of done in places here, just allowed it to streak backwards. It may look a bit of a gloopy mess right now, and you're probably thinking, where on earth is this guy going? But honestly, it, it, it all sort of comes together as you add more layers uh, and, uh, and bits and pieces, and it all comes together with different mediums, etc. And it's just a case of doing the same on the other side, just methodically working through it and don't panic. Because if at the end of the day it does all go a little bit wrong, it all comes off. You can just use um, thinners and it will just all come off. I, I, like, I could have just dabbed this um, cotton bud in a bit of um, white spirit and I could have literally wiped the lot away and it would have been immaculate. So it does kind of take the stress out. But as you can see there, it just looks just looks used. And you know, I didn't want it too dirty because as I say, and I've said it a, a couple of times now, the aircraft itself isn't that dirty. If you do have any questions with regards to this, do feel free to drop me a line or drop a message in the comments section. I do love reading your comments and, and, and interacting with you all. It, it, it was, it's what basically makes this all worthwhile, to be honest. And as I've been away for a while, I've missed you all. So do drop a line, say hello. So here we go, this is what I was on about earlier. It's just a case, I've let it dry now quite a lot um, over a couple of hours. And then it's just a case of just streaking it in the rearward motion, just so that it, it, if there was any sort of stains and that obviously the airflow of the aircraft would drag them in that direction. And again, this isn't an exact science. I'm not saying, by the way, at all that what I'm doing is the right way to do it. Let, let me just get that out there. This is the way I do it. Now, I have seen various videos like Night Shift, Dukes Models, Will Patterson, a few of the others on there. Now, those guys are bloody magicians at what they do. And if you want the right and wrong ways to go about it, well, actually the right ways, go and do that. Uh, go and have a look at those. And I think on um, Instagram, there's a guy called Corsair and he's made this kit as well and he's done a fabulous job of it. So uh, yeah, if you, if you want the right and ways, there are other people out there that you may be better to learn from but uh, this is my way of doing it and I think it's worked well so it's now down to black oil paints again to give it variation and this was also um, as I'm pointing out with a brush now if you've got vented areas such as where these are you can just dab this black oil paints in there again it's thinned with white spirit and it really makes them come to life like there is actually those the, sort of the black inside the aircraft look like you can see in but obviously you can't because it's plastic kit but uh, this gives it that sort of depth if that makes sense and i hope that sort of comes through in this this part of the portion of the episode just a case of a steady hand like that you don't want this too thin because you want it to actually sort of go into the recessed areas and stay there so it's maybe a practice on a on a on a pla on a mule kit that you've got one that you don't use just just practice on there and see how you uh, how you feel about it 
there we go this is a little bit thin but it has come across okay so I, I do come back in a minute with a bit thicker and it, as you can see there it just brings it to life look it looks like you're actually got a dark recess there now rather than the shallow plastic that it actually is I think it brings it to life anyhow hope you agree just in case speed this up for you now so you don't get bored but as you can see it just brings it all to life like so and it's just a case of dabbing over the top just to make sure. And if I got any streaks from it, I really wasn't fussed because these are vents. Um, so, it, it, you know, in, in real life, it, it could well streak a little bit. Again, I wasn't going to be too fussy over it. But there we go. That gives you a rough idea of what you can expect doing that that sort of thing i hope you like i like it i think it's it's brought it to life all that section to life really well so now we move on to the underside of the aircraft again this this gets pretty sort of grubby when landing on the on the aircraft carriers or on the carrier decks and if it was if it's a, like a, a military base on the coast again it, these things pick up all sorts of crud and again you don't have to be too sort of um, what's the word precious with it here i know it looks drastic but believe me it does all come off even i and i've done this a few times did this and thought jesus christ i hope this all comes off because if it doesn't i've just ruined hours of work but no it does and uh i quite i really enjoy this stage yeah i find it quite satisfying because you can really gunk it up to as and how you want there's no try not to make it too uniform so a bit darker here and there as you can see with the vents and then it's just a case of uh, wiping away with a cotton bud and you've got ages to do this because this stuff takes a long time to dry. So this is like 20, 25 minutes later. I've allowed it just to get a bit of sort of grip on the paint and then it's just a case of working through with a cotton bud and, and you really kind of remove it to taste, if that makes sense. If you if you want it, you know, really grubby, you leave it and if you don't, you can, you, yeah, you can remove the taste. There's no right or wrong answer to this. I just sped this up for your viewing pleasure and it's just a case of working methodically all the way through getting all the nooks and crannies and just uh, yeah working through clearing out what you want to clear out and keeping the grime where you want to keep it so there we go all the recess oh a lot of recess panel lines with smears and gunks and bits and pieces it also highlights some panel hatches really nicely and I just think it comes together really well so I'm happy with that oh by the way and that smear there I did clear up later on fear not and they're also where that vent is where the pylon is it looks like it's got a bit of a ball patch I went through later on oh there we go clearing it up I uh, went through that a bit later on just to give that a bit more of a uniform look but as you can see a bit of tissue easy as that and this was probably a good hour after I'd applied it nice and simple hey if I can do it you guys definitely can Just a bit of an overview here, giving you a rough sort of look of how things look. Showing the weathering and just where we're at at this stage. A sort of a good full view of, the, of, of what I've done and how she looks. Let me know what you think. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Unconstructive criticism, not so welcome. <laughs> So, more weathering. Don't worry guys, I'm not gonna drag this out, this sort of weathering. I just wanted to show you the, the stages of, of what I did, just to give you give you a, a, an idea, not, not sort of telling you how to do it, just an idea of how I did it, and maybe that will give you some sort of helpful hints and suggestions of, of, of how, if you're building this, you may wanna do it yourselves. So this is, this is back down with um, black oil paint again. 
know, it's just a case of just just randomly um, picking out the odd hatch here and here, here and there, because not all of them are grubby and not all of them um, are clean. So I just sort of did a bit of randomness, as you can see there, just adding. It's, it's just the case I find with weathering of building it up, walking away, having maybe an hour or so away from it, coming back and seeing how you look. And sometimes I actually do it overnight because you can get carried away. I don't know if you guys do, but I do. You sort of get carried away and think, oh, that looks the, that looks brilliant, that does. You come down the next morning and go, mm, mm, that's not how I, yeah, that's not great. So sometimes it's good to do that. So then you can correct yourself rather than just going down this rabbit hole of it's got to look like this. And I think it looks great because sometimes, like I say, the next morning I come down and think, mm, I've sort of reevaluated this. So here, uh, I, anyway, I digress. I'm waffling on. I'm just here now um, highlighting the hinges and the hydraulic points of the, of the ailerons and flaps just to make them stand out because I don't think they stood out enough. Well guys, we've got 10 minutes of the video left. If you have followed me this far, my goodness me, you are my hero. Thank you so much and I appreciate you listening to my rambles back again after six weeks of absence. You know, if you're back and, and supporting me again and, and, and watching this and enjoying it, well, bloody well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And one thing I do wanna do whilst I've got a, a bit of waffle time whilst you're watching me do this, let me know what you're building guys you know i'm all oh, i love seeing other people's or hearing about other people's builds and if you've got any suggestions or, or things that you're doing and you found work do you know what you know i i'm not one for traveling and going out to model shows as i say i suffer from anxiety so this is kind of my way of almost being able to socialize if that makes sense so um you know if, even if you just want to chat or, or whatever just pm me drop me a line I'm an easygoing kind of guy, and if you've got something you're building, or you want a, a suggestion, or you're suggesting to me, hey, listen, I've built this, and I think it's great, let's do that. This is my way of socialising. We can't all run around the place at the moment, although that is coming to an end hopefully soon. You know, let, let's use this um, platform to, to, to communicate with each other. So here we go, a full view of the whole aircraft, and now you'll be pleased to know, you may not be pleased to know, that's the weathering bit over, and now I'm using Mr. Hobby H102, and now this is like a satin semi-gloss. Now, I kind of heard sort of various mixed reviews of this, not in a bad way, just maybe it's not satin enough, or it's a little bit of this. I've just mixed this um, 50, actually it was, yeah, probably about 50-50 with Mr. Hobby self-leveling thinners, um, medium sort of 20 PSI, uh, and I just sprayed it on. Do you know what? I didn't have any assholes with it whatsoever. It just took that gloss look off, which I didn't want like the new factory fresh gloss look, but it, it just sort of dulled that off a, li a little bit, but it left it with a sheen, which I guess I guess is semi-gloss, and it's come out really well. So uh, yeah, I can recommend this stuff. It's very, very good, and I'll tell you what, it goes rock hard. It really is. It doesn't have that sticky sort of residue left that I found that Alclad um, clears have. I mean, in fact, I'm, I've got to be honest with you um, guys and girls, I'm not going to use Alclad clears anymore because they just seem to stay sticky for weeks and it was really it really drives me mad so I've gone with this Mr Hobby um sort of clears like I did the gloss to start with that was beautiful and now I've used this um semi sort of satin and it, it, it again it's come out really well so uh, can give it the thumbs up and highly recommend it so it's now down time to uh, spray the tail planes and the rear ailerons. Again, I'm not teaching you to suck eggs, I'm just showing you what I did. This is really easy, just a case of doing exactly what we did with the fuselage, but on these parts. And as you can see, it was really simple. And happy with that. I'm more happy that I managed to keep those sticky out bits on the back of the, uh, of the tail planes without breaking them, to be honest with you. Now, onto the genius that is Great Wall Hobby with this. These bits actually, as you can see there, have got little, slotted, little slots like that, and they slot perfectly. Not too loose, not too stiff. Uh, they just slot in great, so that means that they're movable. Now, I know a few people have actually glued these, but I didn't see the point. You can actually move them, so I thought, yay, that's cool. I, I rate that, so that's what I did. I literally just slotted it in. One thing I will say is those, I don't know if you can see them the um, on these uh, ailerons, the static wicks at the back, they are so fragile. I have walloped those so many times. How there's still three there is nothing short of a minor miracle. 
But anyway, I digress, I'm waffling again. This was one of my favorite parts. This, to me, really started to bring the kit to life. So it's just a case of, of again, using a bit of super glue because I wanted to get them in an upright position and quickly. But before I did that, I needed to grab a little bit of a scalpel blade. Um, and as on cue, the scalpel blade turns up and it was just a case of scraping away the paint, but just to keep, uh, just to keep the, the sort of, what's the, keep it intact, the, the um, keep it the strength there. Um, the integrity, that's the word I'm looking for, the integrity with the kit. So scraping away the plastic, uh, the, uh, the paint so that I will glue plastic on plastic with this. So I was very careful not to put, scrape away anything that would be later visible. So as I say, using CA glue or super glue, um, it was just a case of being very careful not to over, over uh, saturate it so that it squidged out the sides when I was putting them on. And there you go, it's just a case of placing them in situ. As you can see there, I'm almost terrified to touch it, but um, I'm sort of prancing around this uh, off camera to make sure that it's level, pulling my head in all sorts of obscure reasons to get around the tripod and have a look. Is that, is that sort of perpendicular? Ooh, there's a big word. Um, perpendicular to the aircraft 90 degrees, and it was. And you know what? It could be 91 degrees, but you know what? I don't care. It looked, it looked good on the eye, so I was happy with that. And I'll tell you one thing I noticed when I once I put these tailplanes on, it really brings out the sheer size of this aircraft. It suddenly goes from being sort of easily handleable to this absolute beer moth of a of a jet. I mean, my God, the Russians have built a bloody massive aircraft here because I actually got my 148 scale F-16 now after I did this just to compare the sizes. And these this plane is big. It is a big old um, lump. So here I am. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm sort of just squaring it up and sort of trying to use my hands as a reference point, which is something I don't recommend because, yeah, it's, it's not scientifically proven. <laughs> I, I just did this to the eyeball just to make, you know, just by eye and it, it looked square. And sort of I did get a ruler off, off camera once it had sort of almost gone hard just to make sure that it was sort of the same distance between the top and the bottom. And it was. So I was happy with that. So there we go, she really is starting to come to life now. So, as I just pointed out, next up it is attaching the canopy and I used PVA glue for this. Now this is the beginning of a bit of an annoying story and I feel I need to include this because, and I know this is late on in the video and you're probably your attention is waning now and I honestly, I understand. But I think we see a lot of videos, especially on YouTube, where it goes right all the time. You know, you see these magnificent model makers, and I'm sure it does go right, but I'm, I want to also sh sort of let you know when it goes wrong, because I think sometimes it's almost, with these guys producing these wonderful things, it almost seems like, what's the point? I can never achieve something as great as them. Well, listen, this kit, I would hope you agree, looks amazing, and I'm very, very happy with it, but I did have a, a bit of a disaster at this point, okay? Now, I, I PVA glued it on, because then it doesn't fog up, and it looks good. Now look here, take a good look at that because there is a, a, a decal that is about to get completely annihilated off camera. What I was doing here, I have no idea. A lapse of concentration, maybe almost rushing to try and get it, get sort of, uh, get it done. But as you can see here, I haven't got rid of the tackiness. And there you go, looking at the top there, I've just placed it right over that white emblem and yap. Uh, I didn't show it on the video, but it was a serious case of Tamiya masking tape one decal nil. It's pulled it up, so now <laughs> I've now got to go and buy a complete decal sheet just for that one decal, and it isn't cheap, and I haven't done it yet because I can't bring myself to do it. What I was doing, I don't know. Guys, please don't stick untacked masking tape over your decals because it doesn't work and it sucks. <laughs> okay, uh, lesson learned. I'm sure you knew that anyway. Um, I, th I thought, sort of in hindsight, that I, I put the, uh, the semi-gloss varnish over it and it would just come off, if anything, come off with this bit of varnish. I was incredibly wrong. Um, it pulled up a couple of decals. To say I was cheesed off, cross was an understatement. So what I'm going to have to do is um, I'm going to go and buy another decal sheet at some point and then when we do the photo shoot, once it's all done, it will be there. Now, anyway, moving on from that slight disaster, 
Um, you might see that this front bit of glass is a little bit fogged up. I ended up off camera removing said canopy and actually getting a real thin cotton bud and just going in there and clearing out the sort of misting that seemed to appear in there. I don't know where it came from. It certainly wasn't glue related, but I wasn't happy with it. So um, later on, I got a cotton bud in there real thin and just cleared out that sort of speckled misty effect on the front there. And I just need, I also am aware that I need to touch up that forward part of the, um, the canopy frame in blue. But these are little things that I, in the next episode, I aim to have done and dusted and it will all be come together nicely. But anyway, yes, PVA glue worked well. To me, a tape over the decal didn't work well. End of the story. And was I cross? Yes. Have I learned? Yes. So with a minute to go now, guys, I, I just cannot thank you enough for, for hanging in there for six weeks. I am sorry it's taken so long. And the worst thing about this now is I can't promise that the next one's not going to be a little way away, but I will get back to this. And I promise you over the winter months and autumn and springtime that I will be back on it, okay? But I'm just going to sign off now and say, God bless you all. Thank you very much. I hope you're all keeping safe and well um, and, and just enjoying the hobby and hopefully enjoying my channel still. If you are, hit the like and subscribe button. If you're not, don't hit the subscribe button and don't hit the like button. It's really as easy as that, okay? Um, I thank you again. Uh, I look forward to speaking to you all again in the, in the near future. And uh, basically, peace out. Have a good one. Enjoy the aircraft. Happy modeling and thanks again.